Hey there, this is Jack from JRP Custom Painted Furniture. Welcome to my channel. This is the piece that we're doing this week. This is for a client who has previously bought some bedsides off me and we're matching the two together. Let's start by removing the hardware. The hardware on this piece was absolutely gorgeous. They were little teddy bears. I've got a picture of them coming up so you'll be able to see. I think I'll keep them for another project, although I'm not too sure whether I'll use them again. Now that we've removed the hardware, the first thing we need to do is give the project a clean. You want to get rid of all the oils from the previous owners. And then we're going to go into a scuff sand. Now, this piece is going raw on the top, so we need to get it down quite low. Generally, I start with 120 grit on my orbital sander just to take off the top layer and then we go in a little bit deeper after that. The finish on this piece is actually coming off really easily, so that's great. It means that we'll be able to get it done a little bit quicker than anticipated. Here I've moved on to the sides. The top lip of the top of the dresser uh, needs to be obviously taken back to raw as well. So I've grabbed my orbital sander and I'm going around the flat part of the drawer just to remove the finish. I managed to pick up one of these sponge attachments for my orbital sander, which is fantastic because it allows you to pop the sandpaper on top and get into the more detailed areas that are sort of rounded already. It just helps you get a little bit extra off that you wouldn't be able to do so with just a normal piece of sandpaper. Now here's something different. I actually brought out my rotary tool to get into the nooks and crannies of the top of the unit, just to get rid of that final little piece of finish, and then I'll give it a quick hand sand. Here I've got my sanding pads in 180 grit, and I've got a 240 grit too. So first I'm gonna go over the top of the unit with the 180 grit. We started off with 120, which took it back to raw, then we're doing 180 and as you can see here, let's go to 240 and just give it that buttery feel. And now we're moving on to the rest of the unit to give it a good scuff sand. Once again, I'm using my orbital sander and I've got 120 grit back onto it. Now that we've finished all our scuff sanding, we're going to give the unit a quick wipe down. We want to remove all the dust and extra dirt that came on the piece after sanding. Now remember we had little teddy bear handles on this unit, so obviously we're going to make them a little bit more modern. So what I'm doing is I'm using Sally's Spack Filler Rapid, which takes about 20 minutes to dry, and I'm filling up all the scratches and dints and holes with that. Once it's dry, we'll give it a sand back so that we are ready to start priming our piece. 
Here I've covered the top of the unit with uh, newspaper and masking tape just to protect it before we start spraying. Now onto my favourite part. If you have watched any of my other videos, you'll know that spray painting is my favourite thing to do when flipping furniture. So here, I'm starting with the first coat of primer. I'm using the Taubman's 3-in-1 primer. I get a fantastic finish each time when I use this and never any bleed through. I'm using my Wagner spray gun. So when you're using these spray guns, always try to remember to overlap each line by about 30%. That way your coverage will be a lot smoother and it won't be as blotchy. Now we're on to our first coat of colour. We're using a beautiful cream in this as we're matching it to the two bedside drawers that my clients already purchased off me. I was being a little bit impatient here and I forgot to put my extension cord on my spray gun. So as you can see, I'm holding it out so that it doesn't damage anything. Let's take off this masking tape and start concentrating on the top of the unit now that we've done two coats of paint on the bottom. There is nothing more satisfying than removing masking tape. It's whitewashing time. We're gonna whitewash the top of this unit to make the wood a little bit lighter. When you're doing this, all you need to do is mix your paint with water to dilute it down. All you do is paint the diluted mixture onto the top of the unit, wait about 30 seconds or so, and then wipe it back with a clean cloth. And that will lighten the wood grain that you have on the unit. You can repeat this process over and over again until you get your desired colour. When I'm doing my whitewash, I like to start with a 50-50 ratio. So 50% paint, 50% water. The good thing is with whitewashing is if you haven't reached your desired colour when you're wiping it back, you can always do another coat. Doesn't matter how many coats you do, just as long as you get to where you need to go. Here I'm coming in with a second round of whitewashing because I just wanted that little bit lighter. Because remember, we're matching bedside tables and the bedside tables that were already done already have quite a light top on them. Keep in mind that the more water you add to your paint to dilute it down, the lighter the colour is going to be. So if you want quite a significant difference, add in a little bit less water to your paint. That way it'll be thicker and will produce a more noticeable colour difference. I like to leave mine on for about 30 seconds because I do a 50-50 ratio. However, if you were doing like a 70 to 30 ratio with 30% being water, you'd probably want to leave it on a little bit less so that you don't have to sand back if it's too much. The best way is to do it in sections. So choose a section, lay your paint down, and then wipe it back. And obviously you can repeat that process over and over and over until you get to your desired colour. Let's put this unit back together. I'm giving it a quick sand with 240 grit before we go in with our top coat. Have you ever used one of these hole punch jigs? They are the best invention ever. All you need to do is measure where you want your hole, set the top of the jig, and then drill your hole. It's as simple as that. I thought they were really quite confusing when I first got them, but now I just can't believe how easy they are to get perfect holes 
in the right spot every single time. Here we're just doing single holes for the top two small drawers of the unit. I'm going to set up for our handles now. So what I want to do is move in the sides of the jig to make sure that they match up with the width of these screws on our handles. You want to make sure that it's an even amount both sides so that the centre is correctly aligned with your handle. Once you've got that spot, you can tighten the bottom screws and then they won't move every time you use them on each drawer. Before you start drilling, just measure the distance down from the actual top of the drawer. You want to make sure that the holes are aligned in the right spot on the drawer and then you can fix the top so that it can just be replicated on every single drawer. Now that we've got the right spots, it's time to drill our holes. Simple. And as you can see, once you've done one, all you do is move it to the next spot, line it up to where you want it. It's already set to the correct measurement, so you're gonna get the same holes, just in a different spot. I'm now just double checking that I have got the correct holes because you know what, I triple check everything, but I like to make sure because there's nothing worse than obviously drilling the wrong holes and then not having your hardware fit. I'm sure we've all been there. It's the worst. Everything fitted perfectly. So now I'm just using the same template on every single drawer, drilling our holes and then we'll do our handles. And here we go, the moment of truth, putting on our handles. And voila! They fit perfectly, they look fantastic. That's all we can ask for. Do you remember this old orange unit with the teddy bear handles that we started with? Look, isn't she pretty? She's come up absolutely fantastic and matches the bedside tables that we've already sold perfectly. Another custom piece done and I'm so happy. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate your support Catch you next time.